Hey, what's up guys? Good morning. Hope everyone's doing well. It's a wonderful Sunday morning, a little chilly out, but uh, beautiful day, beautiful day. Um, looking forward to the uh, the teaching today. Mike Morello is going to be teaching and uh, definitely looking forward to having a powerful service in God. Don't forget to, again, like, share, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And um, we are reading through the Bible together. And today, I think we have a very important, um, important topic. And it, anyone who wants to read the Bible needs to understand this topic. So I would get this out to people that you know are into the Word or just getting into it, want to read the Bible, um, want to learn and grow and develop in God in, through Scripture and be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Um, maybe they don't, they're not on social media or whatnot, text it to them. Get the link, text it, email it. This is critical for all of us to understand. Um, we are, what, 15, 16, 17 days in, depending on where you are, maybe 18 or 19 if you're a little ahead. But uh, I think this is a good time to, to stop and, and step back and, and, and address this. Um, that is the, the, the principle of how to read the Bible how to look at Scripture, how to uh, take what Scripture says and properly handle it. The, the Scriptures have a message. God has something He wants to relay. He has a message He wants to say to us. There is uh, specific teaching, specific principles, and we have to be careful in today's society. It's very, um, there's a lot of relativism, very pluralistic. Uh, so you'll often you'll you'll hear things like this. Well, this is what that scripture means to me. It doesn't really matter what it means to you. What what matters is what does it mean to God and what is He trying to say to us. That's not to say that specific scriptures might at specific times um, speak more profoundly to us. For instance, if you're having trouble. You know, your, your joy is being attacked, you know, life is kicking you in the teeth, and you're just, you know, you're just really trying to push through and soldier through, <clears throat> and you pick up the book of Philippians, and you see, you know, rejoice in the Lord always, you see the peace of God that passes all understanding, you see uh, whatever's true and honest and pure, you know, think on these things, my God shall supply all your need, I can do all things through Christ, right? These are all right there in the book of Philippians, written by Paul while he was in prison. And so maybe those verses speak to you in a greater way than they did before, uh, but they always said the same thing. That's possible, right? That's possible based on our circumstance. And a lot of times I'll say things like, I'll read the same chapter, you know, four, five, six different times and get different things out of it. That's not because it's saying something different. That's because a chapter sometimes has a lot in there. And at the time... Maybe I only gather one or two, and then the next time I get I get points four and seven, and then the next time I get you know nine and and three. That's what I'm saying when I say that. I don't mean you know it, it morphs between my very between before my very eyes. The scriptures morph into saying something it never said before. That's not that's not how the scriptures work. I think this gets to the point of like translation versus interpretation. We know from the scriptures that scripture is not given to private interpretation. It's not, well, what does it mean to me? You don't sit in a Bible study with five people, nine people, three people, whatever, and go around the room and read the same portion of scripture and get eight different interpretations. Well, this is what it means to me. That, what? No. What? What is it saying? What is God saying in this portion of Scripture? Maybe how does that apply to you? Maybe what does this, you know, what does this change for your viewpoint, or how does this apply to your life? But not, well, God's saying something totally different to me. I'll give you an example. That that doesn't really work, right? Uh, but I'll give you an example from from today's reading, actually. Matthew uh, twelve thirty seven uh, says. That by, by your words you'll be acquitted or by your words you'll be condemned. Right? This is not saying, uh, oh, uh, I can just speak it. I can just say I'm saved and I'm saved. I can just say I'm healed and therefore it's so because by your words. Right? I can just say that I'm right before God. I declare it today. Uh, and that makes it so. No. There's things that have to 
have to happen to be right before God. Things we have to do. Um, we have to repent, make him Lord of our lives, things like that. We don't just speak it. Um, we don't just declare our healing. Uh, because if God doesn't heal, then we can declare it all day long and you're, you're not going to be healed. You might be faking it and uh, maybe even cause yourself problems by saying I'm healed, but you're not. But, but that's not what that scripture is saying. But you could definitely pull that scripture out of context and, and use that and say that. This is what it means to me. Well, you'd be wrong. Well, what does it mean? Well, in the context, when you read it, he's talking about uh, verse 34, where he says, you know, out of the out, out of the heart, right? Out of the heart comes the the words, the things that we say, the things that we do. It's out of the overflow or the abundance of the heart. And so, wh what is he saying? He's saying that in judgment we're going to be accountable for all the words that we say. Like, we might want to say, well, I really have a, a good heart, even though I say this or do this or whatever. You know, outwardly, I'm, I'm a lying, you know, um, envious wretch. But inwardly, I really love Jesus, and he knows my heart. Jesus is saying, uh-uh, it's from the heart that evil comes. It comes out of the heart. And so it has nothing to do with we just speak something and it happens. But we could definitely, we could definitely get that, interpret that, rather than translate it. What we are supposed to do is translate what did God say. Let's translate that and see what he is saying to us. What did God want to say? Let's get that out of the scripture. What did he mean when he, when he had this pinned, when he had this, you know, quill to parchment? We need to get that. We don't just read the Bible and interpret it however we want, because usually what ends up happening is we read ourselves into the Bible. We Whatever we want to get, that's what we will get. I promise you that's what happens. When people start that, they usually don't get, oh my goodness, I'm a wretch. I've got the wrath of God upon me. I need to repent now. No, they usually get like, man, I'm awesome, and God's for me, and God's going to magnify my ministry, and that's what they get. Um <clears throat> now, I'll give you another example very popular before we end here. And it also has to do with the heart. It actually ties into uh, w what is in Matthew 12. Have you ever heard people say, well, man looks on the outward appearance, but God knows my heart or God knows the heart. And usually what they mean is, right, I'm behaving in a way that I shouldn't. Um, my character is flawed and I, and I need to work on it. Um, I'm saying things, doing things, right, that are really going to get me in trouble with God, but how dare you judge me or think something or say something or God knows my heart. That's completely out of the scripture. That, that is not what the Bible says. When the Bible says about David that God looks on the heart, it's actually the opposite. Man, Samuel, was judging, okay, man, right, that's Samuel. He was even the prophet, right, and he's looking at, it was Eliab, uh, David's oldest brother looks at him and goes, whoa, this guy's legit. Look at those muscles, man. Look, oh, 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 look how tall he is. This is clearly the one God has called. And God said, uh-uh, don't look at the outward. He looks all good on the outside, but I look at the heart. So it wasn't man judging bad behavior wrongly and God judging a pure heart. It was man saying on the outward it looks good and judge and, and judge. God saying, no, I've judged, and no, that's not how it is. So first of all, it's the opposite of what people usually use it. Second of all, even if it was man judging the outward and God saying, no, I know the heart, how do you judge the heart? It's by the things that come out of the heart, which we usually can see. Right? This is what Jesus is saying in Matthew 12. When we do things that are wrong and bad, when we behave in ways, we have character flaws, we, we don't have the fruit of the Spirit, this kind of stuff, God doesn't say, oh, but I know that deep, 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 deep down, you really do love me. No, he knows that even a layer deeper than that is the wickedness from whence comes our outward actions. So again, you could read that and say, well, this is what the Scripture is saying to me, and I'm here to tell. I'm I'm here to tell you. I'm here to tell you. Many people will go to judgment and be very surprised when they had that kind of mentality when they're reading the scriptures. Well, this is what it meant to me, and God said, "Well, that's not what I meant." 
I'm sorry, you cannot come in. You are not a faithful servant of mine. I never knew you. Cast them into outer darkness. That's exactly what many people are going to hear because they don't want to hear what God is saying. They don't want to translate what God said into their lives. Into They want to interpret what did God? What did God really mean? Well, he he said what he meant. He said what he meant, and and so I think we need to take that principle, and be careful as we study and handle the scriptures, and try to gather. It takes more work. I get it, but we we have to do the hard work to be able to properly translate and get what God's message is. Otherwise, we will end up in error. So let's do that. Let's read the scriptures in context. What is God saying? What does this scripture mean? Not, well, what does it mean to me? And properly, properly handle the word of truth. I love you guys. I hope this has encouraged you. Again, please watch this video again. Uh, get it out there. Encourage people to watch it. Encourage people to get this in them. Because as we study the word of God, one danger of studying the Word of God is that we read the very Holy Scriptures, the wonderful Word given to us by God, and we get what we wanted out of it instead of what God intended. Very dangerous thing, but this right here, if we will get this principle, it will uh, it'll be a vaccine for us. It will inoculate us against deception and false doctrine because our mindset will always be, I want to know what God is saying in these scriptures. Love you guys. God bless you. Looking forward to service today and um, hope you have a great Sunday.